So, as she said before, my name is Sprink, and uh, obviously it's not my real name, it's my stage name. My real name is Josiah, which probably pop on the screen sometime before. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, before I start with my speech, um, I'm adopted, and uh, I was adopted before I was born, so I, I don't really know much about my biological family, except for that my biological dad is Mexican and my biological mom is American. Um, and, yeah, and I was adopted by uh, like white Americans, so I just passed off as being white the entire time. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, I love my family, they're the best. I grew up in a diverse uh, environment, going from, coming from North Central High School to like my family, uh, like I have like uh, family members, even in my adopted family who are like Hispanic. Uh, one uncle is from Peru, the other uncle is from Mex Mexico. Um, we're not related at all. Why? <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, this is the picture you've got. Is there it is? <laughs> there it is. All right. So for my gap year. I went to Cambodia. This is called the Swing Bridge, where you can like literally swing back and forth if you wanted to. And it would like still stay like it's a really sturdy bridge. Um, so like uh, for my gap year, I went to Cambodia. Uh, went through the I like I was with Cambodians 90% of the time. Like I was like only three, like three international students in my. So, like, service-oriented school, um, where, like, I taught English, I, I built <coughs> buildings, and, like, I helped build a university there, uh, which is, like, now fully complete. Um, yeah, and I, going into Cambodia, I didn't know any of the language, none at all. Coming out, I could, like, function in the Khmer language. Um, and like I learned how to like I learned to be in the Khmer culture and learned to be in like an environment in Cambodia because like there was not many other Americans around me. <laughs> and uh, if I didn't learn Khmer, I would have no friends <laughs> in Cambodia. So yeah, and also like when you learn a language, you learn the culture because like there's some things that I can say in Khmer that I can't say in English because like you don't get the meaning of it. And like part of it is like the cultural differences. So yeah. And um, I have like friends who since I'm adopted, a lot of my friends that I got close to in Cambodia, they like, I now consider them family. And like we're like uh, brothers and sisters now. So it's really cool. Like we we'll, if we know either one of us are in trouble, we'll drop what we're doing and just fly straight either to U in the US or to Cambodia. This is really cool. So, yeah. So, my poem is called The Struggle of, the Struggle of Stereotypes. Um, so, yeah. I've been told to go back to my own country. People have said to me that I should go back to my own country when I'm a US citizen. I've been told that I'm an Arab, a minority, and a foreigner. They assume all these things before they even talk to me to see that I have a 317 Naptown accent. <laughs> the people who taught me the most were minority teachers because they had to teach me how to use adversity to my advantage. I had to fit into the stereotypes of an Arab, a Mexican, and of a white man, never being able to fit in. I guess that's how life goes, never being able to be with anybody because I don't fit into their stereotypes of who I should be. I seem to stand out and then be thrown to the outcast. Yeah, I'm an outsider. It's hard not to be when society has nothing but my race to define who I am. In high school, I was judged before I sat down at the table. People assumed I listened to country music, rock and roll, or classical. But I was more into the rap, reggae, and Afro pop. I only had the opportunity to be who they saw. Sometimes people still don't accept me because I don't fit into their stereotypes. I seem to be stand out. I seem to stand out and be thrown to the outcast. 
Yeah, I'm an outside, outsider. It's hard not to be. This society has nothing but my race to define who I am. Race does not define culture, and culture does not define race. I am a poet. I am a collectivistic person. And I value generosity. Maybe if someone got to know me, rather than assuming that I'm like them, it would save time and heartache. I don't know about you, but I want to live in a community of diversity, not where everyone is the same. 